See, we live in a world where it seems that everyone is scrambling to spend that moment in the spotlight. We chase the attention, we thirst for the glory, and we bask in the accolades. And we wait for everyone to pat us on the back and tell us how wonderful we are. In a way, the spotlight validates us. And to some of us, it doesn't matter how we got there as long as we're there, as long as we're seen. But for athletes living in this age of entitlement that we're living in, where we are expected to be given playing time, expected to be given a starting role. Well, striving for something, earning your spot, your playing time, and putting in the work that has to be done, even though it's not fun, which is why they call it work, is something overlooked as we jockey for position in that spotlight. And the great ones, they know this. I had an old coach tell me, Scott, the season is a marathon and not a sprint, so enjoy the journey. And I thought about that. And that journey, well, it's filled with hard work that nobody cares about, sacrifice that nobody sees, all for an outcome that is earned. And it's that last word right there that trips people up, earned. Too many athletes skip the gym just to cut a corner. They cheat on that quiz because they didn't care to study. They don't push themselves in conditioning because, well, it's running, duh. But somehow, when the Friday night lights come on or the gym lights power up, the expected result is success, and they haven't put in the work. And to me, that's lunacy. You see, football games are 48 minutes, basketball games 32 minutes, but a single practice is nearly two hours long. And the average athlete puts in a minimum of 10 hours a week in practice just for a chance to shine when they get their shot in the game. But the question we need to ask is, isn't how long was practice? How many hours did we put in? The question is, what did you do in practice to make yourself better? How hard did you push yourself to get better? And the great ones, they know this. And that's the beauty of sports. Learning that success isn't born on the battlefield. It's cultivated on the practice field, the weight room, the film room, the classroom, and that it's every single day. You see, success doesn't just happen. It's the byproduct of doing things the right way. It's the result of being a good student because you know as an athlete, you're held to a higher standard. It's picking up that piece of trash that everyone walked by because you have pride in your school. It's opening the door for someone and being aware of your surroundings. It's showing respect for your teachers and coaches because it's the right thing to do. You know, some of these things aren't necessarily at the top of our fun list, but they have to be done in order to be successful. You see, everyone wants to be great, but not everyone wants to do what it takes to be great. In sports, as in life, we spend way too much time aimlessly chasing that moment with little regard on how to even get there. You know, the journey, the extra set of deadlifts, one more sprint, staying after practice, staying after class. It's a butterfly effect. One thing affects the other. Poor students are usually bad teammates. Bad teammates are usually bad citizens. You get the idea. So as we meander through this life where most people want the rewards but don't want to pay the price and only do what they want to do and not what they have to do, remember, it's that have to do part that helps make you a winner. And the great ones, they know this. And those are Scott's thoughts.